Welcome back. My name is Sarah. I'm known as Carnivore Yogi. Thank you for clicking on today's video. This is an update. I will link the first video that we did below this video with my friends over at Pluck Organ Meat Seasoning. They tried the carnivore diet, James for 28 days, Amanda got to 14 days. We'll talk about why she quit early and why James, he had originally planned to do 14 days, then stretched it out to 30. And then at one point he said he was going to do 90 days, but he actually stopped at 28 days. So we're gonna talk good, bad, and ugly, why they did that, some of the things that they ran into, and possibly some ideas for troubleshooting if that is something that you are trying to do right now. If you're interested in carnivore, if you're carnivore curious, this, I think, video has some really good resources. So that is this video. Again, Pluck will be linked below this video. I also wanna make a quick announcement that I will be opening up my March group. It will start on March the 14th. So two weeks from the day I'm releasing this and I am offering only four slots for some one-on-one -on -one work. I have not done any one-on-one -on -one work in over a year, but I'm at a position where I can do this now. So if you're interested in either the group where we go in there, we really do troubleshoot people who are doing a high fat carnivore, doing regular carnivore, maybe you want to do high fat, doing keto, we work with all this stuff, people who are curious about their mineral status, if their gut status, if their gut is healing and how to heal the gut. Um, all these topics we work on in the space of my group, as well as the whole addiction aspect, which we actually did touch on in this video. So that again, to get on the list, to be notified when all that opens and is available, the link will be also below this video to sign up for my newsletter. But I really do hope that you guys enjoy this video and I will talk with you again soon. Bye. All right, guys, thank you so much for coming back. I have two returning guests today from Pluck Organ Meat Seasoning, which I'm going to link episode one below this video where we talked about um, James and Amanda both wanting to try carnivore. We did a lot of Q&A about carnivore and here we are 30 days later, I think ex exactly or close to it mm -hmm. to get an update from them and uh, just, just talk about their experience and kind of what is, is coming next. Uh, but before we jump into that, I would love it if you guys would give a quick plug for pluck organ meat seasoning is something I've been, I mean, honestly, I was skeptical about it <laughs> and we use it pretty much every day here. I mean, we put on chicken, eggs, fish. We just tried it on salmon last night. It was so good. So I would love it if you guys give a quick plug for that before we jump into the carnivore stuff. Yeah, thanks for having me, Sarah. Um, yeah, so Pluck is the first and as far as I know, only organ-based all-purpose seasoning. Um, we use five organs. So we're using liver, heart, uh, kidney, spleen, and pancreas. And um, they're freeze-dried, powdered. They're from New Zealand cows. So we're, we're very conscientious of the sourcing because uh, it is... Oh, yeah. Probably many of your your viewers and listeners know that that the quality of how the animal is fed, how they are treated, um, what's going in their body or what isn't going in their body is so important. Um, I actually probably would put most of my emphasis over like when I'm eating meat is making sure that I spend the most money on the quality meat versus anything. Yeah, because because because, uh, you know, the health of the animal is going to be the health of us, right? If you're eating it. So, yeah. um, so the, uh, sourcing of the organs is so integral for the product. We're sourcing from New Zealand, who, from, from beautiful regenerative, you know, farms that are treating their cows really well. And, um, and what's so cool is that even though the organs are coming from cows, as you said, the, the spice goes well with like everything. It's everything. Like you yeah. Fish chicken um I, we during our our carnivore uh curious days we did it we put some on oysters and it was so good oh, i gotta try Who that you know, <laughs> it's just like it's just working on it's so versatile and it works on on everything so far that we've tried and um and you don't need to know how to cook you just treat it just like you know salt and pepper you yeah. know just sprinkled on your food either during the recipe or during the making of it or after it doesn't really matter and um, it also yeah. does well on organ meats so yeah we that's had true. it on chicken hearts and beef heart and yak heart we've got some yak heart marinating right now um and 
it adds a really nice flavor yeah. to the organ meat. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And you did mention that you were working on an AIP recipe also for those of my yeah. viewers who are on an autoimmune protocol as well. Yeah. You know, I think that's the biggest, uh, some of the m majority of our comments that we get, I mean, so we get lots of feedback that, Oh, I love the spice. So, and, but the people that haven't been able to try it are pretty vocal and they're like, we yeah. want this spice, but we can't do, you yeah. know, seed spices, yeah, the seed spices. it's a lot of AIP people. So we're like, great, that will do it. <laughs> so I'm awesome. working on it this week, actually. And as soon as it's, um, as soon as I've got it to where I feel happy about it, which I think will be pretty quick. Um, we'll put it out there. You know what I mean? Awesome. Like, we're so excited. And we're probably going to make an announcement once I have that solid recipe where we'll be like, okay, hey, anyone that wants to order this, you know, it will kind of probably do like a makeshift packaging. You know what I mean? Like we'll have it, yeah. we'll have it. So it's not necessarily the final packaging because that always takes longer, but we'll get like people to purchase it who want to try it and give feedback, you know, and continue the process of helping to make the product even be better. It a special soft launch even. So yeah. like if any of you awesome. want to send us a DM on Instagram or on Facebook um, or even email us at uh, social at cool. Um, yeah, well, I'd even to that point, I'd recommend that anyone that's AIP that's listening or watching this um, sign up for the newsletter because that's where we're going to make the announcement there, you know, so go to eatpluck.com, sign up for the newsletter, even if you're not ready to purchase anything, but sign up so that way you get you're the first to know when it when it's announced, because it's going to probably be a limited run at first and it's going to, you know, it's going to go fast, I'm sure if if if, if the audience yeah. is as free for it as I keep, we keep getting the feedback. Awesome. And I'll make sure I link in the video in the show notes and in the comments, your, um, the link to buy your handle on Instagram, which is what eat pluck yep. and then your email address too, in case they want to just reach out through email. So make sure we cover all the bases. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, let's jump into your carnivore experience. Who wants to go first and, and talk and, and talk about what's, what's next. <laughs> Well, I think I'll, I, I can start, but I think we, you should share yours because, but I'll just, just remind everyone. So we, we had our meeting around 30 days ago. Mm -hmm. um, we had committed initially to 14 days. And so Amanda did the 14 days and at the 14th day I re-upped. So that's all I'll say right now, but okay. you share your experience, <laughs> your 14 day experience. Yeah. Um, so like the highlights are that I really loved how satiated I felt the entire time and I tend to sometimes overeat because I really I'm, I'm hitting flavors I'm like this tastes so good and I'm feeling really full but I'm going to keep eating that never happened on carnivore so I was never bloated on carnivore um I when I was done with a meal I just I knew I I was done and that was it and I didn't have any cravings after that to snack you know like I took your recommendations there and I did have three meals a, a day, but sometimes that meal was just a, a buttered coffee in the morning and like two slices of bacon. You know, I was mm -hmm. never force feeding myself. Um, we were always really pretty intuitive with what we were eating. And um, I learned that I really love texture mm -hmm. a lot. Like I really need the variety of texture in my meals. So I came up with this carnivore pork crumble pork rind. up, um, calamari <laughs> oh <laughs> like wow squid and i dipped it in egg the crust was the pork rinds the, yeah. the pork i crushed, wow. crushed the pork rinds and then dipped it and that that's on our instagram that was that was really that fun. was invented that was definitely creative wow um, and it was good it was it was good it was so, it was delicious. so good I, I seasoned it with pluck i mean i i honestly think i could feed that to my mom and and she loves calamari and she wouldn't know that it was like carnivore so yeah. there are some clever things um Sad to say, we never tried a popple. Is that what it's called? The, the waffle. Oh, oh, the yeah, the, the oh yeah, the, the chaffles. Yes, waffle? yeah, yeah. Cheese and waffle. I have. Oh, cheese. Is that what it is? Yeah. I know you have a recipe that we still have to try, but we were trying not to do dairy. Yes. Um, Initially, right? Mine's Initially. dairy free. It is. Mm hmm. Is it? Oh, is it? I thought you said it had dairy in it. I don't mm -hmm. know. I didn't see it. So. 
most of the chaffle rep- recipes do have cheese, but mine is just egg yolk, um, some sort of a fat. So I usually, usually use like a bacon grease and then it is a little bit of baking powder, just like a, like a quarter teaspoon for four egg yolks. And then you whip it up, put it into either a waffle maker, or you can do it as muffins in the oven, top it with butter and no dairy. It's so good. Yeah. It's like a real well, muffin. There's no, there's no chicken in yours. It's just, it's just the eggs. Nope. Uh, no, just egg yolks, just the uh-huh. yolks even. Yeah. 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 Um, and I love waffles and just never, I don't know. I never got to it. I, I love eggs. Um, so, you know, I, there was a point though where, so I was losing about a pound every day for that first week. Which and she's already. I am really small. already. She's, <laughs> she just don't no, have it to lose. Even I was yeah. like, Amanda, what's going on? Here? And uh, so I, I thought I was actually going to have to stop. Because yeah. I got so I think I, I think I started at like 108 and I got to like 98. And wow. uh, yeah, I kept joking with them like Amanda, I don't know an adult that is under 100 pounds. Like this is freaking me out. <laughs> well, it's, it's quite normal, I think. For, for I'm part Japanese and right. Indonesian, and many of my uh, family members, extended family members, are quite petite. I'm five three. Right. Um, mm-hmm. I have many Japanese family members that are five feet. <laughs> They're just like tiny, tiny people. Uh, so it wasn't like totally abnormal, but I just thought, ah, uh, I might be calorie deficit. And that's what, what's happening. So I, re- mm-hmm. I did reintroduce a full fat yogurt and some eight month old manchego. Manchego, um, yep. Is it sheep's cheese? Yeah, sheep. So it was no, no, no cow. And then yeah. within a, a day, actually, like I gained two pounds. Um, and so I was like, okay, I'll keep mm-hmm. going. Um, interest the most interesting thing is that when i stopped carnivore and i reintroduced uh cucumbers and avocado and i admit i a tip do not reintroduce foods on a holiday (laughs) (laughs) i reintroduced foods on valentine's day and i was making james's kids some treats and uh, you know i had almond butter Um, Mm. so nuts came in a bit early and uh, like a tiny bit of uh, honey or coconut sugar. But I went, as soon as I reintroduced those things, I could not stop eating them. Mm. I got so bloated and I just, they, it wasn't as filling. Nothing was as filling as protein. Mm. Um, Were you also though, she, you also made the mistake of eating too many things at once. Remember you got the buzzing, you know, you got the, her lips started to um, So I actually got buzz, which no, is a sign of it, sensitivity. What right? actually happened was just the bottom part of my lip here was uh, tingling. 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 That's it. Oh wow. Just With, the bottom rim. That's it. But that's usually a sign of sensitivity, but she wasn't sure what was the sensitivity because Well, was- I had yes. I had lemon, I had cucumber, I had avocado. So again, like I know better, I know reintroductions need so much more time. As much time as you put into an actual like cleanse or dietary change in an elimination diet, you really need that much time to do reintroductions slowly. I agree. Well, is it, so. Do you think it was more challenging? Cause you, you normally are a very conscientious eater. So do you think it was more challenging cause it was so restricted to then being done, you know, to, to control what you're eating or do you think it's just cause it was a holiday and you There's just- a, I think the holiday had okay. a lot to do with it. Cause I had, I was already planning on, I, while I was on carnivore, um, I made, James's family some meals, no problem. Like I didn't need those things. Um, Again, I felt fully satiated. I do wish I would have done it for at least a week, like minimum week longer. Um, Yeah. To go through a full cycle, a full 28 days. Um, I, I, now that we're at 30 days, I probably will be starting my uh, cycle tomorrow, if not today. Uh. And it's been pretty mild. Like I haven't had any cramping yet. I don't know if that is already an effect of having you know, the, the protein and the fats that I had throughout the month. Um, one other highlight I will say is that after carnivore, I brought in copious amounts of yogurt, cheese, and there was another day. Oh, full fat cream. Mm. And and I have never been more constipated in my entire life. (laughs) Yeah. So I didn't, but so I like barely brought in cucumbers and then just like a ton of dairy and yeah. uh, it, was, it was not pleasant. <laughs> now, we, 
we both experienced uh, during this process bouts of not pooping many days. Mm -hmm. I think your first bout was seven days. What was the longest you went? The longest I went was seven days, but it wasn't uncomfortable. Right. I, yeah. I didn't feel backed up. I didn't feel constipated. I just um, thought, well, I should probably be pooping by now. So I did take a bit of magnesium um, and a mm, mouth. Good. Over. And what's your, so what, like, cause I know we, we've been, we were giving um, updates on our Instagram, you know, mm -hmm. and a lot of people kept saying, suggesting certain things, but I'm just curious, like uh, for your audience, like, so we both struggle with that a little bit, um, even though yeah. we were in discomfort, it still was the case. And, and of course, when you do poop, there's not much that comes out, which is fine, right. but it's more of like how many days you're going without. And so what would you say, would you, would you say it's not enough fat, not eating enough fat? I think can be not enough fat. And then also, I think a lot of people, uh, they need some digestive support. So okay. I've, I just have a podcast that's coming out this week on Wednesday. So it'll be out once this is out. Um, cause this will go out like a week from now, but we really dove deeply into uh, stomach acid and how like 80% of people have a little bit lower stomach acid. And when you switch over to something like an all meat diet, really, I mean, you think about how much more stomach acid you really have to produce in order to eat that much meat. And so I think that a lot of people could really benefit because it goes both ways. You see constipation or you see uh, diarrhea. Like it's, yeah, right. it's like one or the other. And I, which James had, well, I had, I had, you, uh, no, yeah. cause we have, we started right before we started. So yeah. James had a, I had a couple days. Yeah. Oh yeah. I had, yeah. She <laughs> loved, you just want to share. Go I ahead. Share. She loves my wife and Mar and Amanda think this is so funny. <laughs> Go ahead. That's fine. I, mean, you can I have share. no shame. I have no shame. Go ahead. Um, well, I wasn't in the room. <laughs> I, wasn't, I, I wasn't shat there. my pants. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Carnivore update. Yes. Mm. yes. Yeah. It was one you of know those what, though? Like, where it's like, you know, where you're like, I, I think I have to toot. And uh, oh, wait, no, I didn't just toot. Something else just came out. Oh, was, no. Wow. Yeah. yeah so you know my, what, though? If you search uh, on YouTube, really, you can go like 30 day carnivore experiment or carnivore experiment. This is like super common. I mean, so okay. super common. Joe, oh, yeah. Joe Rogan talked about it. Like that was his biggest problem. And it was like, if you just added some digestive support, possibly some enzymes um, in the middle of your meal and some stomach, some HCL at the beginning, um, that could really help with that transition. Cause again, it's, it's either going to be the diarrhea or the constipation that most people have. And it's because our gut is just not, it's, a, it's not adapted to handling that much protein. And then if you do fat, it's not adapted to handling that much fat. So that can, um, can definitely help people a lot in that transition. But yeah, it's like, that's the biggest thing I hear when people are adapting over and everyone has kind of a different take on it. It can also be low magnesium. So magnesium does help, but it's like, it's just a, a big adaptation for the gut to handle for sure. Yeah. And it was only what I think like the first three days for me and then where that, okay, happened. Good. Where that happened. But and then so, it didn't happen again. Right. And that never happened to me. Um, but again, like, I really think people, like it needs to be a 30 day thing, which which you've now yeah done, so, so so i did do uh i did 28 days and and i awesome. so this is i knew no new information for you but i had committed originally to three months and i got to 28 days and leading up to the 28 days um i was having some stuff happen that just was in such congruence to my body like to to what i did it wasn't feeling right and so mm. basically what was going on near the end was that I was getting really nauseous, which is I, which I think is you know gallbladder, which is gallbladder. Not, yep, not digesting. That's where those enzymes well. come in. Yep. Yeah, and so he, so I was feeling really nauseous, but to the point, and everyone was like, "Oh, you need more fat. You need this. You need that." And I was like, and I was also uh, hadn't pooped in I think seven days or something like that. And I wasn't oh, in wow. discomfort, but I think that was adding to the nausea, like you know when you have to mm. go and toxins aren't getting out or whatever it is, right? Um, oh yeah. And, and so everyone was, we were getting lots of different feedback, like, oh, you need to up what you're eating. You're not eating enough, you know, and all this stuff. And you need that. But I could not fathom eating any more fat. Like mm -hmm. the idea of eating more fat, I thought I would throw up. 
if I did. Like it was so my body yeah, was just gallbladder bladder up. too. Yeah. No. Your body your go and, bladder will tell you that kind of like nauseated, like that's that's definitely your gallbladder talking <laughs> for yeah, you for and, sure. Yeah. And so it just got to the point, like I think on my 28th day, I had eaten uh, all the way up to lunch and I just was so nauseous the rest of the day that I, and I, it made me not hungry. And so I just, mm. I ended up going to bed early that night. And I just, that night I, I just got clear. I was like, you know, I got to stop. I'm done. I'm done. And, yeah. and, um, so I went 28 days. Um, what was really interesting though, is that I, I was taking supplements. So I was taking, um, betaine, um, the mm -hmm. strongest HCL. HCL that yep. I could do, which is, uh, the, a biotics brand and it's pretty mm -hmm. dark. It's like really That's a good one. Dope. Yeah. Yeah. So I was taking that. Um, and I was taking like six caps capsules a day, which is mm -hmm. kind of like the highest you should go on that almost mm -hmm. with the betaine at least. And then I was also taking, um, beta TCP. Mm -hmm. I was taking, was and I was taking HCL and beta TCP. Well. Yeah. Nice. I was taking two, two before every meal. And, and I, even that day when I was feeling so nauseous, I even took another two, like just mm -hmm. to help. Can I interject yeah. and just ask a question? Yeah. So uh, do you find that people digest like the solid fats differently mm -hmm. from the rendered fat or versus the yes. raw? That is one thing that we didn't actually play with. We weren't doing, uh, I, I admittedly have to admit that we did not try the raw suet. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. <laughs> um, well, what do you, what do you it. qualify as rendered fat? Because, because we had a little discussion about it. Cause I was like, well, so of course rendered fat is typically it's, it's cooked the, and then the cooked, it's separated. the, it's the separated mm -hmm. the separation from the cook. But like, if you're eating a steak and the fat that's on there, that's not technically, like, would you say that because that fat was cooked, that it's rendered, even though it's, it's whole, you know, like the edges of a steak, or would you say that's just the regular, that's just fat. Yeah, I would say that's cooked fat. And a lot of people can really tolerate. Um, I would say there's like three levels of people with the fat. And the way I prefer to eat fat is just frozen, cold, you know, in its purest form. Like that's the way I digest it best, feel the best, don't feel heavy weighed down or have the digestive issues. So that was like what I would say, like a level one. And like a level two, I see people throw fat into like an air fryer. That would be kind of similar to fat on a steak that's been cooked. And then where I see people have the most trouble is if they just have like liquid fat, I think for your bacon grease, for like beef fat, like if you're doing that liquid, that tends to be really the, the hardest for people to, to digest. I mean, I've made a mistake before by cooking broth, like a really fatty broth and then not chilling it and skimming the fat off the top, just drinking it. And I have had like in the middle of the night, woken up, like thrown up, nauseous, just the worst pain, right? It was right side pain. So I know it was gallbladder. It was just, so I don't even now after doing this for a couple of years, I don't go anywhere near any kind of like liquid fat, really. I'm just like, nope, don't want anything to do with it. But I've, I'm pretty adapted. You know, I've done this. I can eat huge amounts of fat, but I still like to have it cold frozen raw and do just fine, you know, but it's, yeah. yeah. I, I, Amanda kept bringing it up like, Oh, we should do this to it. We should do this to it. And, and, um, I, I, by the time I was at the place where I probably would have done it, I was feeling so nauseous. I was like, oh, I'm done. I'm just uh -uh. Can't, can't even fathom it. Um, yeah. but I will, I will say that. So here's a lot of the takeaways I got it was really an easy diet. I mean, in that I was not hungry at all. Um, and it was, I, I enjoyed the simplicity of it. I did think about you a lot because I was like, um, I cannot believe you when you first did this, that you did just ground beef, uh, ground meat. Like you did ground yep. beef, I think the whole time, right? Yep. I did ground beef for most of the time. Yeah. Because when I would yeah. try to do a steak, it was really hard for me to digest it. Like I had, I, I know I had really low stomach acid when I first started and there was no information, like not like there is now about <laughs> how to do this. So I was just like, well, the ground beef doesn't make me feel sick. So I'll just keep doing that. And I think the one thing to clarify for people is like, I've changed my mind about carnivore a lot. I don't think that anyone that doesn't have a lot of autoimmune issues or like isn't really trying to get to the bottom of food intolerances. I don't know that they need to really do this. You know, I think it can be helpful, 
But, you know, when I first started, I had so much pain in my body that it was like, it was kind of the last house on the block for me. Um, now carnivore is like kind of trendy and a lot of people are trying it. And, um, so the fact that you were like, I could do this, do it, but I kind of just don't really want to, I think that's a huge win. I think that's really good and intuitive and smart because you just, I don't really like the idea of people, uh, force feeding themselves or forcing themselves to do something if they don't have like a legitimate medical reason to do it. You know what I mean? And, and, and yes, and to when we neither of us did, which I think is important to recognize that yeah. it's, this wasn't that. And I, I think, I think anytime you do any, any, any health thing that that's anything that's going to ground you to it, you know, is, is even though you don't want to necessarily have autoimmune or something like that, but it's going to help you get through it sometimes. Um, yeah. If you have that kind of why, you know, um, yeah. um for, for me though, I really did appreciate that it was simple. Like particularly, you know, I have two kids um, um, and then in, including my wife and Amanda's part of our household too right now. And it's just like, it, it was just really nice to know that when dinner had to be made, like I could just like, Amanda and I kind of like tag teamed on it a lot, but like, it was just so nice to know how simple I, I could take care of everybody else and then quickly take care of myself. Like I just was so easy. To yeah. take care of myself it didn't have to be this labor intensive process or like figuring out okay i have to measure this and measure that and figure out exactly it's like no just here eat some ground meat you know ground beef and it was just i really appreciated the simplicity of it um i did initially lose some weight you know like i was probably losing about a pound every two days but then wow. it kind of just stopped mm. like i got to like 190 two ish or three ish and it just kind of stopped. And, um, and then when I would, I wasn't going to the bathroom, I'm like, okay, I'm clearly not going to lose weight if I'm not going to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but I still feel like, like some people could say, Oh, well, maybe that's just your weight. I actually think I do have more weight to lose, but I, mm. and I think that I was my, I could tell my body was changing. Mm -hmm. So even though the, the, the scale wasn't moving, I could see that I was getting comments left and right. Oh, your face looks thinner. This looks different. So I know that my body was shifting, but the, the, the scale was not changing. So that yeah. was interesting. Um, and I didn't do actual tape measurements, which if I had, I'm sure those would have been changing. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Totally. No, I didn't, we didn't do that. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to do more than just scale, you know, when you're doing that kind of stuff. But, but um, I did an experiment while we were in this and it was really fascinating because I, so the, when we were doing some research on carnivore, there's really two two vitamins I think that you don't really get on mm -hmm. carnivore. Here. One is vitamin C, mm -hmm. and what the other was uh, I don't know. Nutrition with Judy has a great um, infographic on like what just beef can give you, and then what you can get with like fish or organs, oh, organs and all organs, that. Exactly. And yeah. it was like so vitamin funny. C was the one that you, if you ate like it's six, tricky. six oysters, you were still only getting like, or eight oysters, you were only getting still like 20%. I mean, and then you yeah. could eat it was like very limited. And so what was really interesting is that during this process, when we first started, there were some oranges and apples on our, on our island, our town. And every time I walked by there, I was like, gosh, I was just pulled to them. Right. And yeah. what's interesting is that as the longer I went on with the carnivore diet, I was more and more pulled to the oranges. Mm. And then I learned about the vitamin C. Yeah. And I'm like, this is interesting. I wonder, well, this might be a really cool experiment. So I, what I did was after, I think this was after the first week. So I was probably like seven or eight, maybe eight or nine days in, I took a really high dose of vitamin C tablet mm. just to see, like, if I took that, would I still crave those oranges? And I totally didn't. Wow. Like, the I took the, the, the supplement, the vitamin C supplement, all my interest in that fruit completely went away. Wow. It was interesting. really interesting. Um, but I kept kind of, I, I really, what I loved about what I did was that it gave me some space. I always mm -hmm. think of that Dave Matthews song, the space in between, the in between. There's some song that has like the space between. So I always yeah. think about that. Like a lot of times when we have like, um, like 
addictions of any kind, any mm -hmm. anything that where we're constantly being pulled and, and craving something. I always think about how can I create more space between mm. my desire and then my that kind of like uncontrollable action. need, your action, yeah. Yep. And trying to create more space. And I think there's lots of tools that we can use to do that. But what I appreciated about this is I got that space. So mm. while I was on carnivore, the craving, the longer I was on it, the cravings went away. Um, I was not starving and I just kind of, all my needs were kind of felt met to a degree. I was, I, there was a level of like, I felt dull, like dulled a little bit. Like I felt like, yeah. I right. I don't feel like I was as happy as I normally am. And I, and I think it's tied to textures and flavors that I wasn't getting that normally do add some emotional component for me. Um, uh, I don't, I don't actually truly understand that piece because both a man and I, our energies completely shifted once we went off. And mm. so maybe that's tied to a multitude of things. Maybe it's even tied to that. We didn't have a health issue. You know what I mean? Like, so, right. so maybe there was something about the diet that was a little not in congruence with where we were at physically. I don't know. Um, I, I kind of yeah. want to, I want to unpack that a little bit before I truly, um, I want to delve into that a little bit in my own, you know, inner, inner stuff to better understand it. But I do feel like I got space and I've yeah. been really able to explore like cravings and, and, and action and needs and listening to my body. Like, like even so yesterday was really was, yeah, I think yesterday was the first day I actually started incorporating things. And I, and I realized when I did it, that I would eat something. I think I had a we had some gluten free sourdough toast, and there it's the the bread seriously. So they're really small pieces, mm. and it's a pretty clean gluten free bread. Um, but I I did a little piece of that, and I was like done. Like I ate a little bit, and I'm mm. like, I'm good. wow. And I had such control and such clarity. I was like, I'm good, done. Wow. And I don't know. I, f I rarely feel that way. Like I rarely feel yeah. like I'm in that control of cravings and stuff. And, and so that was really nice. Like, and I still feel like that. Like I, even this morning I had, I, like I'm finding that I'm, I'm still kind of incorporating some of the things that I was doing on carnivore. Like I was eating more sardines and, and mm. like so this morning I already had some open from the other day. And so I had those for breakfast. I just, wow. I would never do that before carnivore. Yeah, I would wow. never do that. Mackerel. Um, I think I need those omega threes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's encouraged a lot yeah, more I'm just, seafood for sure. And um, yeah. and I really am craving vegetables and like and so I like last night I listened to that and I had some salad and it was great. Like I felt really good and and so I think to your point, like I think any time that we can get closer to ourselves and listen to our mm -hmm. and get get and prick our ears more and listen to our bodies and get closer to what your body is communicating to you is a win like so i feel yeah. really good about what i learned what i experienced and what i gained from my 28 days on carnivore that's awesome and i feel like that's so it's just it's helpful to do that sometimes and um, as somebody who gets addicted to different foods, I have at different times in my life that's with carnivore. I think that flatness thing, going back to that a little bit, I think that can be normal. And it's been that way. Anytime I, I get away from stuff that I'm addicted to, that's giving me something. And I think that could be part of it with that flat feeling is just like you have space away from like food is just, and you guys are both like immersed in food with what you do for a living. And, and so you kind of take that down a little bit. I think that there's definitely a big emotional component that comes with that. And, um, there, there could have also been like, okay, you're shifting, uh, hormonally and some other things going on as well. But I, I think that emotional component is so hot, you know, is huge. And that's why I think people, one of the reasons why people just or like, I can't do this anymore because they're, you know, they, they enjoy eating different foods and different textures. I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all, but, um, that's just my little, my thoughts about that feeling of flatness. Um, it's a possibility. Now, one thing that came up near the last week, and this came up on our Facebook or our Instagram lives, um, 
and I thought maybe it'd be valuable to touch base about it is the hormones. Like I, yeah. I, I didn't measure my hormones before, but I could definitely feel like my mojo is not as strong. You know what I mean? I think, I think yeah. one of the ways men can measure it non-scientifically is just, okay, would well, you wake up with morning wood? Right. And yeah. Like, and if you don't, and, and how strong is that morning wood, right? So the level yeah. of it, I think that's how men can easily measure their, their hormone levels. And I did notice mine was like, just not, not as like yeah. solid, you know, and, and, that, and, and admittedly that was making me nervous, you know, that was making yeah, me like, totally. oh, okay. Like, and it was at, and maybe it was potentially adding to this whole, like, I think I'm done. I don't know. I mean, I think, I think yeah. that it was all adding up, you know, the, not pooping the not yeah. feeling mojo and then definitely the, the nauseousness was just like the tip of that it was like okay i'm done like i can't do this yeah. anymore. like when you get yeah, to the and- point where you just can't imagine eating anymore like i feel yeah. like okay, something's got to change <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah and i think that's a good observation it's so interesting to see how different people respond to the diet some people are like wow, that's, you know, every morning I wake up and it's, you know, the men report that that's better than ever. And, um, that they have this big shift and this big transformation. But the thing that I have reiterated a bajillion times on my channel and my platform is like, it's not a one size fits all. We don't get a guarantee of like, you watch somebody on the internet and that you do exactly what they do and you're going to get their same results. And, and I have seen, I interviewed a guy last summer who, um, he had to change the way he was doing carnivore. Like he had to go super high fat and then eat more often to get his testosterone back up. Cause he did see a drop in his uh, testosterone and his sex binding globulin uh, hormone. he saw a drop in that. And so, um, you know, he ended up staying carnivore for a little while longer. Now I know he's added some foods back in, but it's definitely, I think something that can happen. And for women too, the progesterone drop is the one I also see. Um, if we were wondering not- what it was like for women. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. The progesterone drop is the big one I see because women will stop um, getting their cycle or their cycles will become irregular or they'll shorten quite a bit too. So there's several different ways women can say, okay, this hormonally before you even get a blood test is not working out for me. I need to either um, change the way I'm doing this to go super high fat. Um, if you have an autoimmune issue and you really want to stick with it or start adding in some different foods and, and do that in a careful way. Um, you know, if that's something that you, that you want to do, but it's, yeah, I'm super non-dogmatic about it. And, you know, your experiences, I, I know a lot of other people have had that experience too. So I'm glad you guys are being so open and honest about it, you know? Thanks for being open to, to sharing it on your platform. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. You've been really, uh, I, I give, give you props for like, I, if anyone's watching this, considering, you know, um, using you as a consultant, I just have to say, do it because you have been so supportive and helpful in this process. And your, your answers are so, um, I love that they're not extreme, you know, they're so humane and, 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 and clear, like clearly informative like, you know, you really seem to know your stuff, but also experiential, like, and I've been there and I get it, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so it's also, I feel like you're not only a great listener, but you're also a great thinker, you know what I mean? Like, you're, you're both. so I really appreciate that. And I also want to give props just to the carnivore um, community, because when we were doing our lives, like, yeah. like, um, what is it queer carnivore? Yes. Oh, so, yeah. There's so many like He's people so out there. And I think a lot of them are your followers who then yeah. started following us. Yeah, so I got to give totally. props to clearly um, your audience that we just so appreciate you all for just sharing with us um, and giving to us as we were in this process. Cause we, we just, we, we really appreciate the feedback and just, and it's always so nice when, when Amanda stopped after 14 days, I definitely started to feel alone. Like I was like, Oh, cause it's so much better doing oh, yeah. something with somebody. And I highly recommend when people make a health change to find a partner or more. And a you've group. got a group, right? 
Oh yeah. I mean, I run groups, I run private groups and I, yeah, yeah. I've been a part of other groups. Yeah. That's definitely the way to do it to get community support for sure. But just to get, once again, give props. It's like the carnivore community felt like, I felt like they still had my back in so many ways. And so I was like, I just felt so grateful for everyone. So thank you to you, but thank you to your audience for, um, for supporting us in this process. Yeah, they're pretty great. I feel like it's it's been a really cool community to be a part of and see it grow over the last couple of years. And um, yeah, there's a lot of great people and supportive and non-dogmatic too. I know a lot of people that have added foods back in, but they still consider themselves carnivore. And I think that that's, yeah, it's it's a healthy way to do. It's a diet that's a tool. And I always tell people, I'm like, if you get into a situation where you're having food reactions or you're not feeling well, you can use it as a tool, go back to it for a little bit. Uh, it's not a religion and it's not a cult, even though there are some people who kind of make it into that, but uh, you know, it's, it's not meant to be that. And I, you know, for those that are watching that haven't tried this or any other or thinking about it, like I, I really want to emphasize that creating that space because what was really helpful about doing carnivore was that it, I didn't feel like I was starving. You know, like there are yeah. many diets we can choose out there, of course. And many of them, when you do them, there is, you feel like you're star, like you feel like you're, yeah. you're lower calorie than your body wants or lower calorie than your mind wants. You know, something, something feels off initially and you, and, and it's harder, particularly at first. And then eventually you find equilibrium. But I felt fine the entire time there was no moment where i was like i'm starving you know i mean Mm. there was there really was no real moment like that and um and the fact that it was so easy it i feel like it really did create that space for me between the addictions and it gave me some space with just food and gave me some room to breathe and think about okay what do i really need versus what do i want right what do i need versus what i want i think that that kind of dichotomy is constantly we all are always kind of pushing the brake on or, or pushing the gas but we're always like that right it's what do I need yeah. what do I want what do I need what do I want and this gave me the space to really um get get some distance yeah. from it so that I could be more conscious and about my free yeah. choices that's and why I, I wish I would have done it maybe a week longer because the first week was a piece of cake for me mm-hmm. it actually yeah. didn't become a, like a a challenge at all I didn't have until like the second week and then well that's also when I brought back in dairy so it's just it's really just so interesting to experiment with the body and what you need um yeah 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 so really really great and um I'm just I'm really glad we we did this um we did this so thank you for um, joining us in this and encouraging I think it was you know I really think it was encouraged by you so yes yeah you're a huge inspiration (laughs) oh thank you I appreciate that and it's been cool to see and watch and I try to jump on the lives when I can and I know it's 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 just been a really cool thing to to see this all unfold I am curious though I know you guys got ahead in a second here but what are you are you going to do anything next I know that uh, you had mentioned possibly looking at like uh, bulletproof or I've got a CGM that I'm kind of doing the same thing right now since I'm yeah. doing food. Yeah. I've been doing food reintroductions for the last month. Um, mm-hmm. and I've been, I finally got a CGM so that I could actually watch it happen in real time rather than prick my finger a bajillion times a day. Was, but was, yeah. Was from, um, Amanda that I really think, I, I think glucose monitoring is like the next thing. It's like, mm-hmm. we're, particularly for those that have, of us that have been in the health field a long time that are constantly fine tuning that mm-hmm. when, when you hit that kind of wall of like, I don't know what else to do or, and, or like what you're doing is not working. You just go granular, right? I mean, the glucose mm-hmm. monitor real time, you're going to know exactly what things are doing to your body the minute you do them. So to me, that's, I really do believe that's, that is the next hack, you know, whatever the next. Yeah food thing and um i i'm i want to do it as well my wife just ordered one she hasn't received yet but i'm gonna i'm gonna probably delve into that too but right now um right now i'm kind of just taking it slow i mean it really had this is only my second day um Uh. i i i pooped this morning which was so okay so this is something i didn't mention so i did a i did a yesterday i did a coffee enema and that was 
Fabulous. Um, my my wife's site, eat, eatnakedkitchen.com, has got a really great how-to blog to do it. But it, oh, nice. it was game-changing. Like, oh, nice. I have done them before, but coming off of not having pooped in seven days, like, oh, my gosh, so oh. much stuff came out. And it just, I felt so much better. Oh, good. Um, and, I re- and then this morning, I pooped. So I'm like, okay, I'm getting my system back going. Yeah. My, my system is back online. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, so sure. I think what I'm going to do um, is I'm actually, have you ever heard of Prolong? The, the, Mm-mm. okay. So it's like a, it's a, it's a it mimics fast. It mimics fast. Oh yeah. So yes. I have fast. Walter, it's, Walter Longo, that one. Yes, yeah. I've heard that one. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's his program and I just, I happen to have one. So I'm going to just jump into that tomorrow. I'm going to start that. It's five days. And um, I'm just going to do it to clean anything else out. There's just really kind of clear out the system. Yep. And then thereafter, I think I'm just going to focus on, you know, the, the high fat protein and, and vegetables just for a little bit, but nice. keep off the starches and yep. sugars and stuff like that. Cause I'm really enjoying not having cravings. And I find that when I start to eat anything with sugar, it makes me want more. Yes. So I'm, I'm really like, particularly with sugar or desserts, I really do need to be extreme. I've learned yeah. that I work best when I just don't do it. I'm the same way. Yep. A hundred percent. I get it. Yeah. So that's kind of what I'm looking, but yeah, bulletproof maybe, but I, I I would really, I think I would more, even more so than bulletproof. I'd just like to get a glucose monitor so I can just eat and not have to worry about what diet I'm on, but just let the food tell me what's working or not, or let my body and the food tell me what's working or not. Yeah. Cause I think about the bulletproof, what Dave Asprey's doing, he does a lot with the anti-nutrients, which I'm big on. I'm huge on that. I'm avoiding all the anti-nutrients still. Um, but they may not affect you, you know, so you're avoiding, uh, vegetables or things that you enjoy that may have no effect on you at all. So it's, yeah, it's, I, I like the glucose monitor as well. Are you going to kind of share your experiences with the glucose monitor that you're using? Mm-hmm. Okay. Cause I want to, yes. I'm going to keep, I'm going to, I want to watch and hear how that goes. Cause, um, um, I'm just going to be really, I really do feel like this is the next thing. It's the next place. Yeah. I've done a few of them before. I've been working with the same company for the last a little over a year now. Um, Nutrisense. Nutrisense. Okay. Yeah. And my code carnivore, it's carnivore yogi, all one word. You can get a discount if you do a 30 day with them. Um, but I've used their service several times, um, over the last couple of years. And it's pretty boring on carnivore, to be honest with you. You don't really see that much. Happens, right? Yeah. Except at night I was having spikes in the night, um, which showed I was using too much, uh, in too much gluconeogenesis, which is actually what prompted me to switch over to a high fat, yeah. um, version of carnivore. So that was good data for me because I didn't know why my sleep was all screwed up, but it was that I was just kind of in this stressful process, um, not really in ketosis, not in glucose. And so while I wouldn't have a spike from the meat, it would spike overnight. And so that's a little bit problematic. Um, So I did learn that from the CGM on carnivore, Um, but this is the first time I've actually tried foods with a CGM on. So it'll be an interesting, interesting experiment for sure. Cool. I can't wait to see what happens. Cool. Yeah. 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 Well, thanks again for coming on. I know you guys got to hit the road, but uh, I'll make sure I link all your information below so that people can follow you, contact you, and definitely try some, some pluck organ meat seasoning for sure. Thank you. And we just gave you a a code too, right? Yes. Yes. Is it, is it also, it's carnivore yogi also, Also, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. 10% off. Yeah. 10% off. Sweet. Yes. I'll put that below as well. So yay. Thank you again. Thank you. So much there. Thank we'll keep, you. We'll keep watching your stuff. We just love your stuff and thank you for doing what you do. Thank you. All right.